Olá a todos, seja muito bem-vindo ao canal da Discover On. Para quem não me conhece, eu sou o Teacher Hendrik, do aula no Discover já há 10 anos. E hoje vai ser nosso primeiro talk show, talk show com o Gary Pepper. Vocês já vão saber um pouquinho melhor sobre ele, tá? Mas antes disso, não se esqueçam de se inscrever em nosso canal e compartilhar este vídeo à vontade, porque este vídeo vai ser em inglês, é claro, e vai ser para demonstrar o quão importante o inglês é mundo afora. E o Gary vai me ajudar com isso, tudo bem? Então, compartilhem com seus amigos, porque quanto melhor, quanto mais essa informação ser passada adiante, melhor, tudo bem? Uh, outra coisa, no canal vocês têm aqui a opção de mandar perguntas, podem perguntar em português, que não tem problema, eu vou traduzir para o Gary e logo mais ele vai estar tá respondendo de alguma forma e eu também vou tentar passar para vocês, ok? Muito obrigado pela presença de todos já e vamos começar. So, from now on, I'm going to start speaking in English uh, and then again, Welcome to Discover On channel. Uh, my name is Hendrik. I'm teacher. I'm English and Spanish teacher here at Discover School. And today I have this very special guest here with me. Uh, everybody, welcome to Gary Pepper. Gary, how are you today, man? Hello, Hendrik. Yes, thank you, sir. I'm fine. I'm doing okay. Thank you for asking. Yes, cheers. All the better for seeing you. Yeah, I wish we could have we could have this talk uh, face to face. Um, yeah, of course. From, well, these times we gotta be here. We gotta adapt mm -hmm. to the technology. Yeah. And sure. are you safe and sound during this quarantine? How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Doing my best to try and stay safe, of course. You know, like everybody. Yeah, yeah. Just doing what I can. Yeah. Thank Very you. good. Okay, so to start off, uh, mm. Gary, what can you tell me about yourself? Tell me from where you're from. Uh, what you've you've done in, like in this crazy life of yours because I know a little bit about it. <laughs> I should write a book, really, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm um, uh, I'm Gary, of course, uh, is my name. I'm English. Uh, I'm from the United Kingdom. Uh, from uh, my hometown is a city in the south of the UK, south of England, called Bristol, uh, which is about an hour and a half. Uh, by car from London, so not too far at all, really, from London. Um, and so, um, I've yeah, I've been around a bit, travelled quite a lot in, in my past, which maybe we can just talk a little about in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. But at the moment, yeah, I'm here uh, in Santa Isabel, of all places, uh, in Brazil. Uh, and I'm teaching, of course, uh, for Discover School. Um, and I've been in Brazil now not quite two years, almost two years. Um, it'll be two years, actually, on uh, September the 2nd. Um, but yeah, um, I'm here in Brazil um, simply because of my wife. My wife is Brazilian, uh, and um, although she was born in Sao Paulo, I'm not, I better not say she was, um, she's actually born and bred in Santa Isabel, but she's born mm. in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo, but brought up, spent most of her life here in Santa Isabel. Uh, and so that's why um, we are here, why I'm here, and why I'm teaching, obviously, for Discover, um, simply because um, I'm here. Uh, and we're here um, for lots of reasons, many reasons. Um, we did spend some time in the UK, uh, but we decided to come to Brazil for a while. Uh, and my wife, Shai, now is studying at university. Uh, and so, obviously, while she's doing that, I'm teaching. Uh, and so, you know, I'm on the other side of the world, and it's been a hell of a ride, I must admit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that's kind of it in a, in a nutshell. But, of course, you know, as I'm extremely old, as you can see, you know, I have been up to kind of a lots of stuff <laughs> in my life, I guess. Yeah, and part of that is thanks to the band you had, right? Can you yeah. mention it? Can you talk, tell me about it? Yes, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I play the guitar. Music has always been my the, the love of my life, if you like. Uh, I've kind of spent most of my life uh, kind of trying to be a, a, a pop star, rock star, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's been my passion. It's always been my passion. Uh, and luckily, uh, my uh, one of the bands I've been in, or the main band, I should say, that's really been kind of on and off my whole life, well, since I was kind of 
uh, 18, 19 years age, a Jaguar, a band called Jaguar. Uh, and although, you know, we are kind of still going, although at the moment we're kind of on ice, as we say mm-hmm. in English, we're, it's on ice. Um, but luckily for me, uh, the band has allowed me to travel to lots of countries and play, uh, which example? has been absolutely fantastic. So, and even um, we got to play our first US show in 2017. Uh, but I played kind of in most European countries, not all, uh, all but right. certainly, and, and several of them like Germany, Holland, uh, Belgium, many, many times over. Um, all right. And, it's and just, not, only, not only European countries, right? Sorry? Not, not only European countries uh, or, or the United States. You've been to um, some places as well. Yeah, um, the Middle East, uh, I spent some time playing uh, in, in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, although that was with another band completely. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, we've, kind of been, we've reached most countries in Europe uh, to play, uh, even if it's just a one-off, quite often festivals. Uh, nice you know, we, we do love to play festivals because you get to reach kind of a bigger audience quicker, uh, if you like. Um, but yeah, we played a lot of the huge, the big festivals in Europe. There's a huge festival in Germany called Wacken. Uh, we played there uh, a few years ago. Sweden rock, you know, it, it's been just brilliant. It's really cool, I have to say. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Wacken. Uh, well, that must have been a hell of a ride, right? Because Wacken yeah. is mm. humongous. There are tons yeah. of people. There. Uh, one of my, my dreams, for those who don't know, I, I love rock and roll as well. And uh, one of my dreams is to at least uh, go once, attend once to Vakan, mm. you know, and, you mm. know, just be there with the crowd. Mm. That must have been amazing. Yeah. All right. Thanks for sharing that with me. No problem. And, um, well, you said that you've been to, of course, Dubai, uh, Germany, Holland, and these different places that at least don't speak language, don't speak English as their mm-hmm. first language. All right. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, how was it for you to communicate there in these places that they, they only study English because probably it's just a, a, a school thing, you know, like it's mandatory in school. Uh, mm-hmm. How would you describe it communicating, uh, being an English per- person? Mm-hmm. In these mm-hmm. um, I, I, think it, it, I think it very much depends on the specific country uh, in, in terms of, you know, how well, uh, as a whole country, for example, how well they speak English. Uh, so I think it very, so first of all, it definitely depends on the country. Um, mm-hmm. By that, for example, I mean, for example, um, Holland, uh, the Netherlands, um, and the Scandinavian countries, mm-hmm. uh, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, uh, and Finland, I think, but maybe not quite to the same extent. I mean, they, their English is, is perfect. You know, they speak very, very good English. Uh, I mean, I, again, I don't know that their schooling or education systems in depth to know whether that's simply because they're taught English from a very, very young age. I don't know without checking. Um, but so, for example, you know, those countries, you know, you can get you can get by without speaking Swedish or whatever. You can get by very easily in those countries with just English. Um, but obviously, in other countries, you know, it's not the same, uh, even within Europe. Uh, our, na- our, the, our neighbors, France, for example, they don't tend to be um, huge English speakers, for example. Um, so, you know, you do obviously have to try and make more of an effort to meet them halfway there. Um, but, you know, I do find it, it depends on the country where you are. Uh, uh, for example, Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, of course, you know, that, that is an Arabic speaking country, if you like. Um, but when I was there, this was many, many years ago, uh, my, my kind of life there was really as part of an expatriate community. Uh, mm. So even within that country, I didn't really have an awful lot of contact you know, or certainly having to speak Arabic or, or, or whatever, because most of my work and my life there um, was really just using English. 
so it kind of, you know, and, and I was very, very young at the time. And it, I don't think I gave much of a thought to trying to at least learn some of the local language. Uh, so I, I, I guess it didn't kind of enter our heads at the time to do that. Um, but it does depend on where you are. Um, so I guess that's the first thing you would, anyone, any, if any students are wishing to travel, whatever, of course, that's the first thing maybe that you could research is, is the country you're going to, what is their, you know, uh, what is their proficiency in English? Uh, because as I said, it does, does vary completely from one country to another. And that's, I guess, what I would, you know, that's how I would answer that question. It does depend. Uh, yeah, we'll get to we'll get to this thing about countries that uh, don't have like as mm. much good English as mm -hmm. the Scandinavian countries that you just mm -hmm. mentioned. Yeah, uh, I've heard I've heard Swedish people and Dutch people speaking English, and to me, uh, I'm a Brazilian person that tries my best to be like a very mm -hmm. good English speaker. Uh, mm -hmm. When I listen to a Dutch person or a Swedish person, their English sound flawless. To me you know mm. uh, then again i'm a brazilian person and i i still i still haven't lived um in the united states or either uh, mm. england ireland which is also my dream to at least yes. be once visit yeah. because I, I find it a beautiful country um mm. yes but yes. then in these countries that you just that we just talked about um the the norway uh mm. switzerland probably uh holland mm -hmm. germany they do speak good english because i i've heard them before but how about mm -hmm. countries that don't have as you were just uh explaining how about countries that don't have that much good english uh mm. were there any difficulties for you to communicate in these countries how was your understanding uh in common in the communication terms i mean uh in these mm. countries that you don't have like a good English. Well, uh, again, I think for me, it it, it depended. Certainly, what the reason why I was in a specific country mattered. It depended why. Now, I'll, I'll explain that. For example, I mean, if I was in or visiting a country, let's say with the band. Okay, mm. so go, I'm in a country wherever that is, Holland or whatever. Um, despite the fact that, you know, as I just said, that the Dutch speak wonderful English, but whatever country that might be, if it's a, a visit that I was making with the band, then the people, the promoter, the people that we I, we were we're dealing with to do the show, we was was just spoken in English. Um, which it kind of is kind of false in a way, um, because you don't you know, what, what I'm, I suppose what I'm saying is in, in a band situation, visiting countries to play, we kind of, you didn't need to know the language because as I said, for us to, to go there, you know, we've already, you know, the, the arrangements mm -hmm. um, and, and the contact and things with the promoters and people that run the show that are putting on the show is all done in English anyway. And where, of course, when you get there, it's just a continuation of English. So let, let me try to get this straight. Let, let me see. Uh, going to these places that uh, you had a manager or, yeah. or I don't know, maybe the, the, the owner, the, the manager of the event that you are tending to, that you're going to play in, mm -hmm. uh, they yeah. arranged everything for you. So mm -hmm. pretty yes. much it didn't, yes. feel like, it didn't feel like that much that you are uh, into their culture. You're like now in a challenge because you're in a country that doesn't speak English but he didn't have the chance to try and communicate. Is, is that it? Is that what you're trying to say? Um, what well, I guess what I'm saying was, in, unless, you know, certainly in a band situation and, and, you know, our entourage, if you like, you know, if you didn't want to try and uh, experience the culture of where, where we were, or, you know, the country we're in, you know, if you, if you, if you didn't, you're not interested, you didn't care, then you don't have to because, our little world, if you like, uh, is, 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 was, you know, is where English is being spoken within that situation in a festival or whatever it is. Um, so it, you didn't need to, however- it felt too comfortable, right? Yes, if you like, it's a comfort zone, isn't it? It's a comfort mm -hmm. zone. But, you know, as the rest of the band would tell you if they were here now, 
one of my things I love to do is, you know, in, when we roll up in another country, I, I love kind of disappearing off on my own, you know, wherever we are, checking it out. Um, and, you know, very often, you know, the rest of the band will be, will be panicking and they'll find me uh, in, in, a, in a local bar with all my new friends. And, you know, but that's just me, you know, I, I love to do that. Um, but and, and obviously here in Brazil, well, certainly here in Santa Isabel, um, obviously the school aside, you know, English is not widely spoken, of course. And, I, I, you know, and, and I, uh, my, my Portuguese is very, very limited, um, as you know, Hendrik. Uh, and because I am kind of lazy, uh, which I will expand on in, in a minute, being a lazy English speaker. Um, but I kind of, I kind of enjoy the, trying to communicate with, I can't explain, it's very difficult, but it doesn't bother me. I, I don't kind of get scared about that. You know, I quite like going, you know, even here in, in San Isabel, into stores, you know, and, and the person maybe doesn't speak any English, and we, but we eventually get there and, and you know, I've made a new friend. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, it doesn't scare me that it never has. Uh, it, perhaps it should, but maybe I'm too thick skinned. But, you know, I kind of like the that I like this get, get there in, in meeting someone halfway. Um, but the reason I say this, I think if you're in a country on a not nothing to do with a band but as a person on a, on a you know as a person on a personal level maybe you know as a tourist or you know like me you know through you know living in a country working or whatever i think that's different you, you don't have that english speaking bubble mm -hmm. you know with your bandmates and all of that stuff you don't have that so I guess you do need to make an effort or you do need to try, don't you? It's different, I think, is what I'm saying. You yeah, I, I, I think, Gajin, for those, uh, for those, just to clarify, what Gary here is just pointing out, and I am totally behind him, I'm totally supporting his ideas that, um, okay, guys, for you students uh, that are like starting their journey throughout English or people that are ready uh advanced in, in the english studying uh, you are already doing a very good thing studying english because you guarantee that mm -hmm. somehow in the mm -hmm. pretty different places that you that you will be eventually go in your life uh english will save you somehow uh yes, but yet yes. Yes, it is good, good to get to know the language the culture and and as gary mentioned before the level and proficiency of english in that specific place that you're going uh, otherwise, you may get a little bit frustrated trying to communicate and people will start shouting at you because uh, they will think that a way, of, a way of having a good com communication is to start shouting at you. Uh, did this happen to you, Gary? Yes, in certain countries. I don't want to name names, but, you know, yes, that, that has happened. <laughs> okay yeah um, to me yeah. to me happened to me I, I it didn't happen to me but i saw this <laughs> and i felt a little bit ashamed to be honest because um this time i went to orlando it actually was my first time that i that i stepped my foot on on the united states um uh, i got into this store i remember clearly as as if it were yesterday i stepped on this store and uh i just saw a brazilian woman Starting asking in Portuguese, but trying to scream because she thought that uh, she would have made her uh, well mm. understood if she were screaming like "Quanto costa," which is how much in, yeah. in, in Portuguese, yeah. right? And yeah. she just started like putting her voice up in the air, you know, like "Quanto costa," and. I, I just I just stepped out of the the store and said, mm -hmm. "I'm not president now. I'm not going to do this." <laughs> and walked yeah. away <laughs> yeah 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 uh yeah i do know what you mean though Hendrik. yeah i do <laughs> yeah yeah uh, you you most of all know yeah but yeah. it's a good thing you sh you said that you have the thick skin is that what you said right the expression probably you have a thick skin yes yes correct yes, yes. all right so yeah. you feel like all right you are brave enough to come to a country that uh less than 10 percent of people speak a, a good english you know like mm -hmm. they speak english fluently yeah. yeah with a high level of proficiency 
and yet you can wander on the streets yeah. by yourself, especially yeah. here in Santa Isabel, that uh, really uh, just a little amount of people speak English. And mm -hmm. yes. uh, you can wander off here, no problems. You can uh, get by in any store, in any situation, not doing what I just said. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the woman in the United States case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yet somehow you can manage to communicate. And in my opinion, you have a good thing because you have discovered that anytime you want to feel comfortable trying to communicate, you just get in this, the, the, the school that you work with and mm -hmm. uh, or get home to your wife that mm -hmm. these people yeah. speak English, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I think a lot of that is is my personality, you know, I, I because I don't, I, it's difficult to explain, but I think, you know, some people would, might get scared about it or, or whatever. I, I, I don't know, it's just, it's just the way I am, you know, I, I, I like wandering on, off on my own and, and you know, in, in, in new countries or whatever, that's, that's kind of what I do. But, I, you know, I, but that is, again, is just me as an individual. It's simply that other other people probably wouldn't do that. They wouldn't. Oh my God, you know, uh, you know. But I, I I don't know. Um, but you know that that way you kind of you do make a lot of new friends and stuff. You know, it's true. You know, um, I'm not, I, I was going to say I'm, I'm not saying I'll talk to anyone. Well, actually, I will. Um, but you know, I don't <laughs> know. That's that's just my personality. You know, here uh, here in Brazil. You know, I walk down the street and, you know, I, I kind of talk into people and, hey, Gary the Gringo, hey, hey, you know, getting uh -huh. hugs. I, I hug my way to the school, Hendrik. <laughs> That's a good one. You hug your way to the school. Yeah, so I do. I you're, do. You're, you're I, just keep hugging people say. that, of course, you know. And uh, that, yes. that's a good one. In the Brazilian uh, way, of course. Yeah, sure, sure. Because I was going just to ask that. You're from England. Uh, do, the, mm. do people hug, like, out of nothing, out in the open, they just they hug. Mm. Uh, do they hug as a way of of greeting? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. I mean, that is one of the the one of the biggest things in in terms of culture difference or culture differences that I've noticed. Uh, certainly, UK and Europe uh, compared to here, the certainly Brazilians are much way more open and friendly than us Europeans, I have to say, and I include myself in that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and even within Europe, some countries are even more, you know, kind of, you know, would not yeah, appreciate. Keep your distance, please. Keep yeah, your distance. exactly. Don't, you know, don't get in their space. Um, so, and, and certainly, yes, Brits do like a hug. However, that's, you know, that you're only really your, your, your inner circle. If you like, you know, your your close family, um, hugging out on the streets. I mean, I think a lot of Brits would go, you know, what you doing? What are you doing? Get back, get back. <laughs> um, so certainly it does happen, but not as open and friendly as here for sure. But you know, to mention, you know, certain countries again, even within Europe, they're even more. You know, you just you just don't do that. They don't like mm -hmm. it. Uh, maybe a handshake uh is is that's how it is uh and i think probably any you know any any uh, a brazilian certainly going to europe would, would would i'm sure see that would you know notice that straight away um but i guess again it does depend on the individual uh but but i think generally speaking now europeans are a little bit more reserved shall we say uh with showing emotion i suppose I or their feelings. I, I would definitely say that. And, and again, even within Europe, some countries are, are even more, you know, don't like I see. <laughs> we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep working this idea out. I'm just going here to have a quick rewind of what we talked already because some people are just uh, okay. getting in the, the live mm -hmm. section. So uh, for those who got in a little bit later, uh, welcome to Discover On. This is our first, first talk show in English. Uh, here, my guest today is Gary Pepper from England, um, and he just, he mentioned before about all the the touring he had uh, in the past with bands and by himself. 
and how important and how good was his communication uh, in these places that don't speak English as a first language. And uh, he talked about uh, his adventures trying to communicate and making friends uh, throughout the, the, his way. And um, how good it is for him now in Brazil to, quoting him, to hug his way to discover. <laughs> And, oh, I'm never going to live that down. No, <laughs> it's a good one. And getting back to this cultural aspect and uh, this what you're doing stuff, hey, keep your distance from me mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Because we mm -hmm. Brazilian people, we are kind of warm and we know that. But I've Indeed. seen mm -hmm. uh, I've seen that it, it might be a little bit contagious because um, I had I have this friend, this Canadian friend, we took a course together in Sao Paulo, how to be teachers and stuff. And he will tell me uh, the same thing you just mentioned, you know, that mm -hmm. Canadian people are a little bit more reserved, you know, even though they mm -hmm. are very uh, peace and love people, they are very calm mm -hmm. and easygoing people, um, which, which sounds lovely, but they are quite reserved. And this guy, this guy, this, this friend of mine, he would um, try to hug up the body because he, he was, oh, hey, I'm making myself Brazilian. I'm making myself Brazilian. Come on, buddy. And he would just like starting hugging people. Would you say that happened That happened the same to you? I mean, we what well, we were contagious about that to you. What do you say? Mm. Um, uh, I think, I mean, I think, yeah, I, I think if I was back in, in Europe now, let's just say I was back in the UK, I think I would not be able to stop hugging people now. I think... <laughs> Uh, so, I, and I think, you know, it would take me <laughs> a while to get rid of that mindset, I think. So, yes, you're quite right. I think I'd be like, you know, grabbing people on the street. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right. It's a, I don't know what it's ingrained, isn't it? It's, in your, it's a mindset. Uh, but, yeah, I think it could be maybe embarrassing for me, uh, you know, people running away from me because uh, they don't want me to hug them. But, yeah, it's certainly... Uh, I, I'd have to get back. I'd have to put my European head back on, <laughs> as opposed to my my Brazilian head. Come on, I I, I give it at least a month uh, for you. Like I, actually, a top month um, for you to get back to the Euro European uh, style person. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Mm -hmm. So I'm just here checking my notes. I have yeah. one question for you. We, uh, getting back a little bit to the communication issue, all right? Yeah. Uh, we talked about countries that speak pretty much almost flawless English, some countries that have uh, more difficult difficulties for us to, for them to express themselves. And how about Brazilian people? I know, I know that you won't try to be rude or anything, but I want your to total honesty. How good is our English? And how okay is for you to understand our English? Even though a person, for example, a student at Discover that is still starting or in the intermediate level, let's say, uh, how good is it, how okay is it for you to understand it? Um, I mean, obviously the first, I suppose the first thing that struck me, of course, was the, the kind of, the 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 Brazilian Bra English accent, if you like, the way the way in which obviously you you talk English, I mean as opposed to say the Scandinavian accent or the French accent or the German accent, because each country does, you know. I guess I suppose if you reach maybe a super super level of proficiency, you I guess you lose the accent, wouldn't you? Um, but certainly that was the first thing to kind of get used to was the way, or the, the, not, not the technique as such, but the way generally, uh, you know, I guess maybe, I don't know if it's the same in other South American countries here, uh, you know, it's similar, I don't know. Um, but so first it was kind of getting used to that, that accent, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, once you kind of get used to that, you know, I mean, I have to say, you know, I, you know, you know, you probably get, might be getting embarrassed, but, you know, the your teachers, you know, you guys, you know, the Discover teachers, you know, your English is awesome. You know, ah. 
you Thanks. know, Hendrik, I've said this to you before, you know, what you guys do, you know, to teach um, students in a language that's not your own. I mean, to me, it's just, it's kind of a miracle in a way, you know, <laughs> it's so cool. And I, you know, I wish I could do what you guys do. I cannot do that and I never will be able to. So, you know, you guys, you know, uh, is awesome. You know, your level, uh, you know, you know, your lack of accents, if you like, you guys are fantastic in the school. Well, okay, that's enough, uh, that's I can, enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> but, Go out, but, but uh, well, from all, uh, I can say from all uh, teachers from Discover, we really appreciate this, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are really glad that you can mm -hmm. be part of this group because mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm going to ask you to forgive me, but uh, you are doing it, man. Mm -hmm. You are yeah. here for us and you mm -hmm. give us all, all the time some suggestions of what to improve and how to improve with our English, mm -hmm. uh, because even though, as you said, even though we have like no accent, no strong accent or anything, mm -hmm. our pronunciation, mm -hmm. our daily basis communication level of English still need improvement, these both aspects, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, and you, you are helping us quite mm -hmm. a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. from all Discover team and all Discover mm -hmm. teachers, mm -hmm. we thank you for that actually. Well, uh, you, yeah, Gennady, you're welcome, Hendrik. That's my job, isn't it? That's my job. As I've always said, you know, from day one, you know, my first day at the school there, that's what I'm here for. You know, ask me anything, you know, of course, you know, that's part of my job. Um, and it's a pleasure, you know. I've, again, I've made no secret of this. You know, for me, you know, Discovery is a family, you know, and make no secret of that. I've told lots of people that. Um, one thing I did actually want to say was what is interesting with uh, what I have noticed with, with not just the teachers, but other people as well. What I have noticed is where they have studied English, some people have developed that kind of accent from where they studied which is interesting, you know, um, Can you, here, uh, you know, I, you know, I mentioned an example for, uh, of a place that, 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 that you get like, oh, this accent is a little bit different, compared to nation one. Um, well, there's, um, there are, you know, again, I don't want to be naming names all the time, but, you know, mm -hmm. pe I've, people I've heard with what to me kind of sounds like an American twang, shall we say, you know, to their English. And I guess, of course, with the differences between uh, American English and British English, you know, those people maybe use different words, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess you can tell, oh, they studied maybe in the States. Uh, but certainly, you know, some people as well, um, there's one, you know, a person who kind of studied in London and they have a kind of a Cockney, you know, a London kind of twang uh, to their English, which I think is kind of really cute, you know, it's really cute. but. You know, I have noticed, you know, even with, with among you guys, you know, kind of regional accents of where you studied English, which is interesting, isn't it? I think. Um, so that it is I, because. Hmm. Sorry, sorry. Keep on, keep on. No, I'm just saying that that I've noticed. Um, but you know, again, to, to get back to your original point about uh, you know Brazilians uh, English, that um, you know some of you know, again the, the students. You know, even some of the, the, the beginning, you know, the, the early, the beginner students, basic students, if you like, their English is great. You know, I love it when, you know, what some of the younger students, they come running up, hey, Gary, you know, hey, <laughs> hey buddy, you know, we, and yeah, their we, English is great. We actually have, have some people here, some uh, hmm. well-known names for both of us uh, saying, hello, Gringo is here. Hello, teacher Hendrik. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure I would record the usual suspect, shall we say? I'm sure I would. I would know. I would know the people you, you you mentioned. But you know, even some of the basic students, they're so cool. It really, you know, it is. It is such a pleasure. Um, I guess beyond you know beyond our learning environment, if you like, then you know, obviously the the kind of the the, the quality of English, if you like, varies. Uh, you know, in South, been, I spent quite a bit of time in Sao Paulo, you know, mm -hmm. days or days here and there. Um, I know that you do, you do enjoy Galeria do Rock in Sao Paulo, right? Oh, I do. Okay, yes, I have to say you're quite right. 
I, you know, at the moment, unless I find somewhere better, that's my favorite place in the whole of Brazil. <laughs> Galeria do Hockey. You can, you, you always used to find me there. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully I'll be going back there again. All right. Um, yeah, no, we all will so at some point, right? Because I yep. miss you, I miss exactly. you. Exactly. From now on, uh, well, until some point, we got to uh, sit tight. Yes. Well, uh, I have some questions here uh, from people mm -hmm. that are okay. participating. Guys, thanks for the comments. I'm enjoying this a lot. Thanks to you all for, from, for your, um, your adorable messages. And I have some questions here for us, especially for you, Gary. Mm -hmm. um, the first question here is a very good one. How did you hear about Discover? Well, okay, how did I hear about Discover? Well, kind of from two sources, if you like. One was literally walking past, walking by the school uh, here in Santa Isabel uh, with my wife uh, and kind of several times stopping and looking in, thinking, I'd like to work in there. I wonder if I could, you know, should I just go in and say, hi, I'm Gary, can I have a job, please? Uh, I did want to do that, I must admit, but my wife stopped me uh, because luckily uh, she knew, uh, or she still knows, the, the, the kind of the owner of the school. Um, so um, what we decided to do was instead of me rushing in there and scaring everybody, uh, we decided to do it the kind of right way. And so basically, you know, uh, my wife made contact um, with, can I mention Jeff? Um, this, the Jeff, uh, and we kind of did it the, the proper way, if you like. And so mm -hmm. we, we took it from there. We made contact with Jeff, um, but it re be even before that, it stemmed literally from me walking past and look, trying to look in and, hmm, you know, thinking, oh, I really would like to work in here. Uh, so that was my first idea. <laughs> Let me just give me give you a comment on that uh, before you keep with the second with the second source. Uh, the thing the the if you just um, had it on like straight straightforward and say hello guys, we uh, we wouldn't mind at all probably. No, <laughs> not trying to encourage you doing anything like that anymore, but uh, we wouldn't mind that at all. <laughs> well, knowing you guys as I do now, I wish I'd done that. Yeah, because I could probably. <laughs> I probably would have got away with it, but <laughs> at would the time I like, didn't know you, so, but yeah. No, no, if I, could I, go I, back think, again, I, I think, would. You, I think you, you took the right road here to get into Discover and, you yeah. know, getting to know better. Because even though we, we are Brazilian people, there are some people that might not like this kind of extravaganza, let's say, like. Yeah, yeah. Show, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this kind but, of um, um, behavior. I can, exactly. I can say from some people that we wouldn't mind. We would actually, uh, if if I, if I saw you doing that, I would ask, "Can I come on talk to my students?" Talk yeah, I, my... I think you'd probably come out and go, "Hey, give me a <laughs> hug," right? <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a very interesting question here as well from Giovanna. Thank you for your questions, Giovanna. And remember, guys, uh, ask me anything. E para quem não estava aqui no começo da da live. Pode mandar perguntas em português mesmo que eu vou tentar traduzir aqui para o Gary e depois eu explico as, as respostas para vocês, ok? Muito obrigado a todos por enquanto, tá? And let's get back to English. Gary, uh, very interesting question. We, we mentioned a little bit about Brazil, about cultural stuff, between uh, the difference between Brazil and England. But yeah. uh, there's a very nice question here that says, what is the best thing uh, for you in Brazil, about Brazil? What, do you, what would you say? Um, I mean, I, I think it's not just one, for me, it's not just one thing. It, it, it's kind of a, an amalgamation of, of, of many things, really. Um, well, the food, you know, I have to mention the food. Uh, you know, uh, sorry. We I, are proud of that. I apologize to my fellow countrymen, but I have to say uh, Brazilian food is, as much as I do love certain English food, I mean, how can I not love fish and chips, our national dish, and uh, uh, the, the full English breakfast, things like that. But I think generally, if it was a competition, if I was honest, Brazilian food is awesome and, it, and it's, it's, it's fantastic food. You know, that, so the food, for me is, 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 is absolutely wonderful. Um, 
And I, I guess the Brazilian winter as well is <laughs> because, you know, I've, again, I've, I've, I often said the Brazilian summer is way, way probably too hot for me. It's very difficult. For not me only to... for you, believe me, not no. only for you. I can name here, I can hear, uh, name here a very good friend of ours, Gabriel mm. Grosky. Uh, uh, indeed, Le- the legend, the legend that is. We suffer a lot during this, during the, the summer here. We just like w- wanted to walk with a portable air conditioning. Yeah, stuck on the, your head. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, but so but the brazilian kind of winter is absolutely perfect for me like now you know the 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 the, the temperature the brazil if the if it was this like brazilian winter you know 365 days it, it would be perfect um so certainly the you know if i compare that to a, even a uk winter i was gonna ask you, know, you that now which although is cold it, it could be a certainly a lot colder again in the scandinavian countries or wherever um mm-hmm. so certainly the the you know the um the, the the general temperature in the winter uh is perfect uh like this time of year for me uh the food as well uh, but it is it's it's an amalgamation of all these things that, and the you know the the people um i i think i think brazilians particularly are very open to gringos if you like you know i think Brazilian people are, are, are very kind of relaxed and welcoming, you know, to gringos, foreigners, people like me, call us what you will. Uh, and I think that's absolutely a brilliant thing. You know, I, they're so friendly. Again, some countries aren't quite so welcoming. Again, let's not talk about specific countries, but some are, others are, but, you know, I do believe that, that Brazil, Brazilians are, kind of truly welcome uh, us gringos uh certainly you know i've i've not had a problem at all you know since i've been here i've only experienced you know friendliness generosity too you know very very generous people um, yeah we are proud of that too we yeah you you should be i mean and, and brazil is such a beautiful huge country of course such a beautiful continental country. yeah totally diverse and, as well but even for me, even small things like the birds, you know, I know this sounds a bit silly, but the, the birds we get in the garden here, you know, hummingbirds, you know, we put our, um, our water, sugar water feeders up and the hummingbirds, mm-hmm. because we, we don't have hummingbirds in the UK. And it's they're absolutely it's wonderful to just to watch them from, from my point of view, you know, simple things like that. But hummingbirds, well, actually, uh, I would say that animals in general here, even the even the even the flora here in Brazil is quite diverse and and yeah. beautiful, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I have to give that to Brazil as well. Uh, um, let I, me ask you. I'm sorry, one last thing I want to mention. The sure. other thing sorry. was fruit. <laughs> mm-hmm. The fruit, and you know, the fruit that that. I've never, I, you know, the, most of the fruit I've eaten here, I've never seen before in my life. You know, so that was a huge, wonderful surprise. All of the different fruits, again, that we don't see in Europe. Uh, and, and actually, you know what, what uh, another very amusing thing that when I first arrived, I, I remember saying to, to Shai, my wife, is that bananas? And she's like, yeah, bananas grow in people's gardens. Whoa, you're joking. And so, you know, I, again, being, a, you know, that seeing bananas there, oh my God, you know, never seen it before. So all of these things were completely new for me. And, and probably the first great. impression was like, wow, that's wild. And then that is yeah. amazing. <laughs> right? Pomegranates. There's pom- is that pomegranate? Yeah. Whoa. You know, all this stuff. And also I saw um, a toucan, you know, that bird with the big beak. All oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. Oh uh-huh, yeah, sure. Yeah, in a tree, you know, in in San Isabel, I, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was like, oh my god, they're yeah, right there, right? The, yeah, the, so it, all it's just right there. Mm, all these like toucan and hummingbirds and things like this, I've only ever seen on TV. You know, uh, nature programs in the UK. So to actually see these these birds and things, uh, let alone the fruit, you know, is amazing, really. 
yeah. probably, probably you, you may find it silly uh, to us when mm. we hear you saying this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, we are so used to it. We take it for granted. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We yeah, I get that. We don't stop to appreciate it anymore. Yes. And yes. Um, I was discussing this with some people now during the quarantine, mm -hmm. during some, some, some not so good moments. We stopped to think, wow, yeah. we, we stopped. To, we stopped appreciating the yes. little things, even mm -hmm. the, even beautiful butterflies passing by, yeah. mm -hmm. birds, uh, it, the little details. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of yes. funny. So yes. I know, I know, I totally get it. Why you may think that to us that's silly, but um, mm -hmm. when it's not think, when we start, yeah. it's not silly anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Right there, it's just you know, like through the window. It's, yeah. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but anyway, and I still, I still get a kind of buzz out of that, you know. I still get a buzz out of it, even now. You know, I can imagine when, when, when we get to realize what we are missing, mm. uh, and trying just to think on the other side of the fence, if you know what I mean. Yes. Uh, yes. We stop to think how beautiful our grass is, right? Yes, indeed, indeed. Mm. Uh, okay, and getting back to the food that you mentioned, I got really curious. You already mentioned fruits. But mm -hmm. I got really curious. Um, what food have you tried here in Brazil so far? And which one was the, the struck you the most? Like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, I want to have this every day. Well, at least if I could, what, what would it be? Apart from pizza, which is my all time favorite food. You know, I, I, I tend to like the, the snackier foods, shall we mm. say. That's what I would happily eat every day, kushina. Pastel, uh, part of queijo. The pastry uh, things, right? You know, the pastry snack, right? Yeah, you know, the, the kind of smaller foods mm -hmm. uh, rather than the sensible stuff, I suppose, you know. Um, I, I mean, my only, I suppose, slight criticism of Brazilian food would be that I, I do, I cannot stand beans and rice every day, you know. <laughs> I know you. it's your kind of staple uh, diet, you know, I, I'm not bothered if I never see another bean again, quite frankly. Um, but, you know, fishwada, for example, is nice. But, you know, I always tend to go for the snackier foods, I must mm -hmm. admit, which is not terribly healthy, I suppose. Um, well, if you have that much, no, it's not. But uh, no. I totally get what you're saying. But, yeah, you know, I do love cucina. I Powder queijo is such a wonderful invention, you know. Uh, I could eat this, I could eat all of that all day, probably <laughs> every day, you know, to be honest. Yeah. If I was completely honest, that's what I would choose now. If I was going to have something to eat, oh, can I have that? No, all right. Uh, but, you know, if I could, if I would. I all really right. Could. Sorry, the wrong way around. And, and contrasting that with uh, English cuisine, what would mm. you say that, that you you miss not having any more because you're not there from now for now at least um well i, I don't know i think <clears throat> i mentioned fish and chips yeah um i you know i wouldn't say i kind of missed it as such but it would be nice maybe to have it now you know after a couple of years good old fish and chips because obviously you know, French fries, whatever can have here, and fish, of course, I've eaten fish here many, many times, but it's just done differently, I suppose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, and, but the, even the kind of fry up, like I said, the English breakfast, well, we can do our own version of that here, which we do, we do. Um, but I don't know, it's not, actually, it foods that are kind of, it's not, I kind of don't miss them, it's just the fact that I don't kind of think about it. But if I stop to think about it, then I might think, oh, yeah, I do miss it. But I don't think about it all the time. But Sorry the to one, get you down that road then. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like curry. You know, in, 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 you know, the kind of Indian food, curry. Um, in the UK, I think I'm right in saying that actually a curry is the most popular uh, in dish in England or in the UK, and it's not even English as such. So, you know, I'm talking about curry Indian restaurants. Uh, they are literally thousands and thousands of them in the UK. Uh, and I, I just don't see them here at all. Uh, I'm told they are, they do exist in 
certain parts of Sao Paulo, which I'm sure they do. But it's like on you know every uh, local high street in the UK, there's going to be two or three what we call kind of curry houses. So th- I do miss a, a, a good curry, you know, with, with kind of naan bread, poppadoms and the, all probably, of that stuff. Probably will bring up, uh, will bring back some memories, right? When you have yeah, that. So that that springs to mind is I wouldn't mind that. All right. But a lot of the food, of course, is the same, Hendrik. Yeah, your Burger King, McDonald's, KFC, all of that. Yeah, well, those two big chains, they are okay, right? Yeah. Exactly. All right. I have here some more questions. Okay. Um, mm, Well, I have a question which is mixed for me and for you. Hendrik, for you, what is the best part of Brazil? Well, I have to Mm. say that I have family from the north of Brazil, and I give it I think I give that point to the north of Brazil and uh, northeast. Um, that that places are amazing. You know, I've been to uh, Pernambuco, Bahia. I find those places amazing. And of course, well, uh, no, I'm sorry, I cannot name a place because I'm going to <laughs> pretty much almost all the places in Brazil. They are all beautiful, in my in opinion. But now your part, Gary. Gary, what is the best part of your country? What do you like the most? Mm, interesting. Um, about the about England, you mean? Exactly. Um, actually, um, my, I do have a favourite part of England. It's a can. Um, the U- England and the UK is certainly England, Scotland, Wales divided up into what we call a county, which is the equivalent of a, a state here, if you like, mm-hmm. an mm-hmm. area, a county. Uh, and there's a county called Dorset, D O R S E T. Dorset County in the south, and um, a, a good portion of it is is on the coast, if you mm-hmm. like. And so, kind of similar to here, you know, beaches. Um, I think you know that this particular county is incredibly beautiful, uh, and and the the coastline is what we call um, it's Jurassic. So the, it's what we call a Jurassic. Kind of like you know a Jurassic Park with the dinosaurs. It's the kind of Jurassic, what we call the Jurassic Coast, and on on that kind of coastline, you can find lots and lots of fossils and things. You know, like fossils of, right. of you know a fossil is like you know mm-hmm. stones and things of old dinosaurs and stuff like this. So it's a very very old kind of part of the coast. But you know, mm-hmm. I've been there many times, and it just kind of struck something in my heart, I guess. What's the so name of the that, place again? I'm sorry. The Dorset. county is called Dorset, D-O-R-S-E-T. All right. uh, a county, the same as a state, if you like. Yes, yes, yes. But it's just, I don't know, it's, it's just something gets to you. A, a certain I, area yeah. strikes a chord, if you like, uh, with you and you, you kind of, I don't know, it just pulls you back doesn't it? it uh, I, I, I totally get you. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, also me... Cornwall, the surfers kind of area, that's very cool too. Lots of wonderful surfing beaches. Interesting. Very interesting. Thanks for the answer. And I'm, I got curious for these doors at County, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a person that is asking me, why didn't I help the woman? Oh, the case of the United States that I mentioned. Right. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know why it didn't help the woman. Probably because I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't help, and a little bit ashamed of myself. Like I, I'm, I wouldn't. I was pretty young. Well, younger at least uh, that time, and I wasn't brave enough to. Hey, you need help. Uh, if I if I if I go to the United States now and go through the same situation, I would probably help as much as I can because. Uh, now I believe that communication is something really necessary, and as I have like a, the tools for that, I would help it better. Mm. Gary, uh, mm. all right, I have a very interesting question here from Hildo, one of my one of my students. Um, Gary, if you move to England. If he, if he moves to England, okay, yeah. does he have to cut his hair the same way the prime the prime minister did? I didn't get <laughs> it. That is a joke. <laughs> um, I I don't know if he's talking about uh, our prime minister. But is he talking about our prime minister Boris Johnson? Probably, um, yeah. I mean, 
It, it looks like a wig, actually. Uh, I think Boris <laughs> Johnson's hair does look like a wig. Um, right. it, me, his hair is just kind of just uh, uh, messy. All right. Very and good. I, I don't think you could actually pay for a haircut like that. It's not possible. It's just a morning. It's just a waking up morning and get your hair. Just yeah, like exactly. <laughs> it's called the just just get out of bed look, I suppose. <laughs> just, just splash some uh, some water yeah. in the face to yeah. wake exactly. up. Exactly. That's yeah. it. Well, my advice to is it Yego? Did you say Hugo? Hugo, real dog. Hugo, yeah. Hugo. My advice to go, you, go, sir, go. is to go to bed with wet hair. <laughs> and you'll wake up <laughs> go to bed with wet hair and it'll just go <laughs> i have to be honest with you and i know that he wouldn't mind but what he just said gave me a lot of things to make fun of him next class to, to, to <laughs> sorry you go sorry mate <laughs> no he knows that i'm not that bad uh gary unfortunately we are running out of time we still have three minutes to go uh our dear friend Grosky here also has have you ever been to Mercadão Municipal in São Paulo? You do you know so, this place, Mercadão Municipal? Who's, no, I don't. I don't recognize it. I might have been there. The city main market, uh, the old the old stuff of the city ah. market. Like, uh, they have like quite exotic food and mm. uh, very ethnic. Okay. I know where you mean. I haven't been yet, no. Uh, I do know where you mean. Um... I do hope to go there. Um, uh, Shai was telling me there, I could hear a voice in my ear. We haven't been there. Um, oh, she's going to take me there. So that's something to look forward to. That's awesome. So we've right. talked about it actually. Um, but we were, yeah, that's on our, our radar, if you like. Uh, that's on our radar. So was that Grosky that asked that, was it? Exactly. It was Grosky. Ah, Big G. Okay, Big G. I will be going there. Uh, when the boss takes me there, I shall be there. But yeah, it's on our radar. So thank you, sir. Maybe I'll see you there, Big G. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, probably it's going to be one of the first things you do after the quarantine, maybe. Yes, exactly. Exactly. All right. Very good. So, Gary, I'm going to ask you to strike a pose. You say cheese for a couple of seconds so I can get uh a very nice picture okay. of us and then i'll ask you one more question and unfortunately i'll have to say goodbye for now all right okay yeah so let's try a pulse for a few seconds please so i can have like a good shot here All right, thank you so much. I have one more question, which, which is yes, of course. Uh, which is what I just asked. Um, we met, you mentioned Merc uh, Mercado Municipal, the city market. Uh huh. What do you miss doing uh, if we weren't in quarantine? What What would be the first thing you would do if we weren't in quarantine? Yeah. Um. I well, you know the answer to that. Uh, I would uh, rush to the Galleria do Hockey. Uh, <laughs> I, I must that. admit, uh, that would be the first thing, uh, because again, me being me, uh, you know, we, we kind of have friends there now, you know, the people uh -huh. that run the little stalls, the little shops in there. I know a bunch of them now, uh, and I kind of miss those guys. Uh, and and there's, a, there's a really cool bar in there as well, I have to say. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I do miss that. Uh, so that would be the first place we would rush to. Um, I would totally. Yeah, well, I, actually, <laughs> I love actually the area that it's in, Sal Bento. I, I, you know, I do like that area. So I, I love to walk around there as well. So that would be nice. Okay. So pretty much some ball. Okay. Yeah. Gary, to finish now, the last thing I want you to tell from Discover uh, that study teachers, uh, friends mm -hmm. that are watching us right now mm -hmm. very quick very quick because we are out of time a good message about studying english what would that be well my message would be that um that if you want to travel uh obviously if you want to travel and you do want to uh maybe live spend some time studying or living in another country i i think you know hand on heart english is essential for that um and because you know 
I, I, with me being a, a native English speaker, I'm lazy, uh, and I guess luckily for me, <laughs> I do admit that in terms of, of learning another language, um, English kind of is the main language. Uh, and, you know, I, on many, many occasions, you know, I've had conversations with maybe three people or four people from all with different nationalities and different languages. And English is the common language that everybody uses. So it, you will find it incredibly useful and even essential. So oh, please, guys, you know, stick to it. My, if it's difficult, if you've seen me around and I can help you, just give me a shout. I will help you all I can. That's what I'm here for. So don't give up. OK, don't give up. Derek, I really, with that thought. I really appreciate that message. Uh, You're welcome, Gary. Hendrik. Thanks a lot. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> Muito obrigado, Gary. <laughs> ok. Uh, e para quem estava assistindo, eu espero que tenham gostado. É, nós vamos ficando por aqui. Agradeço muito a presença, a visualização de todos. Tá ok? E fiquem atentos para uma próxima talk show aqui na Escola Discover On. Muito obrigado e até mais.